Good afternoon, everyone. It's Anika Menon from HeartHealthBrainHealth.com, encouraging healthy grieving and mindful actions. Today, I thought I would make a video about the differences between learning and knowledge. And I will say that learning can come through book smarts, right? So we can read something and we can learn about it. And certainly, that's kind of how we go through school. We go through our educational process with this sort of learning, right? And a lot of times that takes memorization and we get through our exams and then we start applying what we learned through books or sometimes through lectures. And it's, it's again, learning that can be changed, right? So for example, when I took my neuropsych degree at that time, and this is going to age me, but, uh, it was believed that nerve cells do not regenerate, that we have a certain number of nerve cells and uh, when, if they uh, are dying or if they are damaged, they can't regenerate. And I remember even when I was learning that in school, even though I believed it must be true because this is science I was learning, I thought that, wow, we can see that when nerves are affected on fingers or whatever, um, even on legs, that people can actually regain ability to walk or to use their hands, even if there's been some nerve damage. So I remember thinking that was really strange. And then when I started working with acupuncture, it was so exciting because we were working on helping things like the nerves regenerate too. And working not directly on the nerves, it was indirectly through acupuncture channels or meridians. And so I thought that was very interesting and exciting. And it took a while to change that learning from the knowledge that I gained through books and lectures, right? Now, the first quotation that I wanted to share with you is one that maybe you've heard of, and it was by Socrates. It was said some time ago, and he said, the only true wisdom is in knowing you know nothing. The only true wisdom is in knowing you know nothing. And this is so interesting, right? So this is, I mean, a step beyond humility, right? It's fact, actually, that we don't know what we think we know everything. So if I study a particular course, I think I know everything about that. So when I studied neurology, I felt like I knew everything in here was such a fundamental detail that was very different just a few years later, right? So now we talk about nerve regeneration all of the time. And certainly it's, uh, it's nice to know that we can learn more with time. And this is still book knowledge or research knowledge. There's a certain knowledge that is a wisdom, which is even beyond this written word. There are things that are known or can be known or have a touch of wisdom in them that are often based on very simple thoughts or awarenesses, I'll say, not even thoughts, because thoughts are often shaped by things that we're reading or hearing or seeing or speaking. But there is a certain intelligence that we can tap into. And of course, I'd say meditation works fantastic for this, but it's a wisdom that there's just no doubt that when we have this awareness, there's just no doubt. So let's say you haven't spoken to a family member for some length of time, and yet you have this feeling like there's a love that you share, right? There's this love that you're feeling, and maybe it's not even shared. Maybe it's just you're so aware of, I love my parent, or you're so aware that I feel loved, right? That sort of idea that it's a wisdom and there's no doubt about it. And this is an interesting thing about learning knowledge, wisdom, right? So there's a little bit difference. Like you can't learn. No one can tell you that someone loves you. You just know it, right? So, and no one can tell you that you love and no one can tell you except yourself whether you're learning to love from that deeper space, which really has no expectations and no demands or if it's from a superficial space of transactional level. So that transactional level of love is something we've learned, right? That when someone does something nice to you or for you or with you or whatever, oh, you love them, right? But is that really the depth of love? And that I leave for you to uh, think about and uh, contemplate or perhaps meditate on, reflect on. The next quotation I wanted to uh, share is by Warren Buffett. And this quotation says, knowing what to leave out is just as important as knowing what to focus on. Knowing what to leave out is just as important as knowing what to focus on. And here I come back to education because if I focused on, no, you know what? I learned that in my first degree. I know that was the truth. I'm not learning anymore, right? I've stopped my own learning by thinking that I know what 
the nervous system is like. And I'm not allowing my own mind to expand into new information that's gathered. And certainly it doesn't allow the mind to receive unknown information too. That is this, this breadth of wisdom and intelligence that's just surrounds us that we can tap into even beyond books. So this, I wanted to make sure that I plant the seed too, because these days you might notice that there's a lot of ego around and ego says it knows. I already know this. I've already read this. I, I've read stuff like that. And even if someone hasn't read what you might be sharing, they might say that, oh yeah, I already know that stuff. And I know that I've spoken with a number of people who speak that way and there's a haughtiness to it. There is this know-it-all energy to it. And rather than coming from a space of, hmm, is that so? I wonder, I, I wonder if I could understand it from what you're trying to share with me, because it's different than how I've thought about it till now. And it's such a humble space to receive information this way. And of course, I might be planting the seed because I'm hoping that the lecture, the course that I'll be teaching very soon has this sort of interest in understanding as opposed to I already know this stuff because a lot of people talk about things like meditation or mindfulness or all of these areas of consciousness that we're also now exploring from so many different um, fields that I know that a lot of people will feel inspired and I will say partly because of some of the examples that we've got around us too so whether we look at politicians or we look at scientists or we look at people who are expressing their opinions it's very many are very haughty they're very uh, outspoken but not kindly i love for people to express their opinion this is how i feel about it this is what i think about something there is a humbleness and humility to share information that way there's a whole different energy when it's like a controlling energy you don't know anything i know what this is about i know what i'm talking about you can't teach me anything and that's really not a space of learning, in my opinion. And even for these videos, I hope that when you listen to them, you listen with that idea of that intention of, can I understand what Anita's saying today? And I hope you can. Finally, I wanted to finish with one more quotation and it kind of blends with this idea of this haughtiness, this, this not kind receiving of information from others but it happens in a lot of realms so i wanted to mention this comment that's about privilege and this is the interesting thing right because oftentimes the most educated people in our society are quite privileged too so sometimes they're higher higher incomes or earning higher incomes or they appear to be um, privileged from our perspective in whichever way we might view it maybe they have a great position maybe they have great reputation maybe they have whatever that we might consider privilege and there's this knowledge, this understanding of wisdom too, right? About this, because we can also judge this or we can also understand what is happening in this. And perhaps we can see whether we are stemming from this space too. So privilege, this quotation says, is not knowing that you're hurting others and not listening when they tell you. Privilege is not knowing when you're hurting others and not listening when they tell you. And this was by Deshan Stokes. And I wanted to share this because we can look at it even with children, right? So if you believe in past lives, and I do, but you don't have to. But sometimes when we're listening to children, we think, oh, that's just a kid. And what do they know? And as parents grow up, <laughs> funny, and as their kids grow up, often there's even less listening to, is my child telling me something or speaking something that is actually from wisdom? Or is it just, oh yeah, that, that child is always, always out in, in some la la land. And it's because the mind of the parent has not changed into, wow, my child has grown up. So that sort of idea. But we do this in a lot of different areas, right? So sometimes doesn't someone say that, oh, you know what, that music is very loud, or I really find it very harsh to listen to and could you just turn it down and sometimes the person won't turn it down right it's like and yet it's hurting another person right so a person might think that but this is the music i love but you can come to that compromise right that okay i love this music but let me turn it down just a little bit at least while the other person is around right people do this in their offices people do this at home and this is again this even background understanding that it's hurting another person, not really caring. It doesn't matter. Sometimes people will do this in a neighborhood. Well, I want to play my music loudly, so I'll blare it as I drive down the street even. 
And sometimes people are much more considerate. Today, I would love for you to be much more considerate. And this is, again, having a knowledge about something, which leads to a wisdom in our actions, too. I wish you that wisdom for your day ahead. I hope you'll spend five minutes to see that are you book smart? Are you understanding that wisdom is infinite? And are you consciously acting from that space of wisdom? I hope you are. I wish you a fantastic evening ahead. And I hope you remember, transform your mind and transform your life. Have a great day, everyone.